Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the VxRail Appliance Technical Overview. My name is Jeff Brown. I'm a technical instructor with Dell EMC. I've been with the company for about 17 years, and I've taught a slew of different hardware and software products uh, over that time. Uh, joining me is uh, Javier Menendez. He'll be here uh, for the Q&A at the end if you guys have any specific questions about VMware vSAN, which fits into the VxRail. As you can see, this course provides a technical overview of the VxRail appliance. Uh, we'll first talk about the benefits of the product. We'll then get into what it is, uh, its physical and logical architecture, uh, the components, the terminology, some use cases, as well as features and management options. Okay. So our first lesson is just an introduction to VxRail, uh, difference between converged and hyper-converged, and, and where it really can fit into your, your customer data center. So is everyone here familiar with the terms converged versus hyperconverged? Have you guys seen these terms before? Uh, if not, we'll do it just a couple second review, make sure everybody is crystally clear. Uh, a converged solution is something like a V block or a VX block. It is a huge data center in a box. So when you have a converged solution, you have dedicated servers, which are Cisco UCS servers. You have dedicated LAN switches. You also have some dedicated fiber channel SAN switches. And there is a completely separate external EMC storage array. So it is a traditional data center, traditional SAN, where you have server switches storage. Uh, incredibly high scale, lots of great performance, scalability, redundancy. But that thing can cost you a good chunk of money. Okay. So what's become popular, uh, uh, VX Block is still out there, still very popular for high-end dedicated environments, for private clouds, hybrid clouds. But what's become popular over the last couple of years is hyper-converged. Okay? So we have two solutions uh, at Dell EMC. We have this thing called the VX Rack and the VX Rail. Both of those are hyper-converged. Uh, the big difference between a hyper-converged solution and a converged solution is with hyper-converged, there is no external storage array. There is no VMAX, VNX, there is no Extreme IO, no storage array. Uh, there is no fiber channel SAM switches as well. Uh, what you're essentially getting in hyperconverged is you're getting a bunch of nodes or servers. These servers have CPU, they have memory, and they have a whole bunch of internal hard drives, uh, flash drives, uh, as well as mechanical drives, or you can do a hybrid combination. Okay. So because it is strictly server-based, all we're doing is connecting them together with some network switches, and we're running a bunch of software tools on top of that. Uh, so everything is built into these servers that are network connected. Okay. Uh, what we're using to manage the storage is we're using VMware vSAN and a VxRail. And in a VxRack, which is a little bit of a, a higher end solution, you can either use vSAN for the smaller ones or you can use uh, Dell EMC Scale.io, which lets you scale up to 1,000 nodes. Okay. So VxRack and VxRail are essentially uh, very similar, a bunch of servers connected to network switches. With VxRack, that lets you scale up to 1,000 servers, okay? so you can definitely get past mid-range into higher end. Uh, and with VxRail, it really is kind of a nice cost-effective entry-level to mid-range solution. With a VxRail, which is what we're really here to talk about, the big thing we want to focus on is it allows you to start with a minimum of three nodes. So you can do something very, very entry-level, uh, and you can scale it up to 64 servers or 64 nodes uh, as needed. Uh, it is a true scale-out solution, so as you add a node, you're getting more CPU, more memory, uh, more capacity, and as I said, VMware vSAN creates a server-side storage area network. So all of the disks within the, uh, the nodes are added into one big shared vSAN data store that our data will be protected and spread across, uh, once again, for redundancy and for performance. Okay. Uh, the other thing that makes VxRail flexible uh, is also it's a build your own network or bring your own network. You do not have to buy expensive network switches from Dell EMC. Uh, you can actually have your own network configuration, or if you wanted to, you certainly can optionally buy some switches as part of the solution, okay? So it is really kind of geared toward the entry-level crowd. Uh, we can kind of make it more mid-range. However, uh, you can bring your own network as long as your switches are qualified by us. Uh, we connect them to the nodes, and we now have this hyper-converged environment, okay? Pretty much everything running on these nodes is, is VMware related software. So we're running ESXi as the operating system. Uh, we are running VMware vSAN in the kernel. That's actually going to manage the storage. Uh, and then the normal tools you guys use in your daily lives for managing VMware, vSphere, vCenter, that's also going to be used to manage and deploy the virtual machines. Okay? So that's kind of just a quick difference between converge, the VX block, and then hyperconverge, we said VxRack is a little bit bigger, more scalable. Uh, VxRail is kind of a nice entry-level, cost-effective solution. Okay. Okay. 
So we just talked about what hyperconverged is. Consolidated converged system made up of building block nodes with integrated storage. Okay, simple to deploy. Uh, what's nice is uh, there is a piece of software built by Dell EMC called VxRail Manager. That software is used to initially deploy uh, a VxRail and we can get this thing up and running within a matter of, of minutes and hours. The VxRail Manager software will automatically discover any nodes you have and any additional ones you want to scale on and it will automatically join those nodes into your, uh, your VMware cluster, your ESXi cluster. It'll automatically build and expand your vSAN data store. Uh, and then after it is deployed within a handful of minutes, you can use VxRail Manager to do physical and logical monitoring of health, capacity, performance. Uh, but really, what you're going to be using to manage this going forward is, as I said, your normal vSphere and vCenter environment. Uh, when we talk about the VxRail appliance, when we talk about being most efficient, we're really talking about the storage management. Uh, instead of using separate, expensive, dedicated storage arrays, instead of using other vendors' uh, uh, software-defined storage platforms, we are using VMware vSAN, which is built into the ESXi kernel. Okay? So you don't need a huge amount of extra software, other management tools. Uh, we're using vSAN to manage that storage. So it uses a minimal amount of CPU and memory overhead, because we're using internal disks and we're not getting them from external sources, uh, you have more direct uh, IO path to your data. Uh, when we talk about vSAN full data efficiency services, uh, not only can we take advantage of protection schemes like mirroring and parity and striping, we can also take advantage of deduplication, compression, and, and other cool features if you have uh, the all flash family. Uh, and then with VMware vSAN, you can actually set policies on a VM basis, which will dictate the protection and performance scheme uh, under the covers. Okay. Uh, very flexible, you can configure for any use case, which we'll talk about throughout this presentation. Uh, we said you can start off very small. Okay. We set a minimum of three nodes to get started, and then as needed, you can kind of go as you grow. You can add individual nodes or multiple nodes at a time uh, until you cr increase uh, up to a maximum of 64, which actually coincides with the maximum size of a, a VMware cluster these days. Uh, we'll talk about the comprehensive data protection schemes. There's a bunch of uh, VMware and Dell EMC products that we will talk about that will give you additional protection of your, your data, your applications, and a bunch of different availability profiles for redundancy and performance. Okay? Uh, we said as far as integration between Dell EMC and VMware, uh, the two major products we'll be using to manage it are the VxRail Manager, uh, as well as vSphere and vCenter. Uh, as far as licensing goes, you'll see a slide on this at the end. Um, what's nice about your VxRail solution is it includes licenses for vCenter. There's an embedded vCenter which comes with it for managing your cluster as a whole. Uh, you also get the, the vSAN enterprise license to manage the storage automatically. Uh, for anything outside of that though, uh, you can bring your own vSphere license. Okay? So you can apply any existing vSphere license you've already, pay, you've already paid for to the VxRail or you can certainly buy additional licenses through Dell EMC and VMware uh, for management like HA, DRS, vMotion, and all those cool clustering tools. Uh, what's great is we said it comes with its own embedded vCenter, so you can manage the entire uh, VxRail as its own single cluster. But if you wanted to manage the VxRail cluster uh, using an external existing vCenter, uh, we will let you do that as well. So if you want to use a separate single pane of glass to manage this cluster along with your existing data center, uh, you have that choice, either embedded or external. So we'll talk about that. And as far as the full VMware ecosystem support goes, uh, if you wanted to get this into a larger, more robust, either hybrid cloud or private cloud environment, and you wanted to use tools like vRealize Automation and Orchestration to deploy dozens and hundreds of VMs with a click of a button, you can also integrate this into those vRealize other suites of products, which is kind of cool. All right, let's spend just a couple of moments talking about some of the, the key use cases. Uh, this doesn't include all of them. You can use this for anything you want, but here are some of the use cases we've decided to, uh, to call out. Uh, we can certainly use it in a robo environment, a, a remote office, branch office environment, where you might have a bunch of small distributed data centers and maybe one central data center. Uh, what's fantastic is these nodes are connected over either a, a one gig or a 10 gig uh, network. So you can actually have them distributed anywhere you want, connected over an IP network. Um, so if you have a, a small environment, you can put one new node in three different data centers, or you can have a handful of nodes in different data centers, and as long as they're connected to the same network, uh, we can manage them as a, a cluster. Uh, we can even do stretch clustering, so if you want to do remote replication for disaster recovery over extended distance, uh, we support that uh, as well. 
Okay. Uh, we can certainly use it for mixed server workloads. So if you have some test environments, some app development environments, if you have some high-end production environments, everything runs on virtual machines. Everything runs on VMs. So what's nice is using normal VMware tools, you can actually give higher priority to some virtual machines. You can give less priority to other virtual machines. So you can take advantage of all the normal vSphere tools like shares and limits and QoS policies. Uh, so it really supports any type of mixed uh, server environment. Okay. Uh, I just kind of hinted at this. You can certainly use VxRail as the backbone of a, a hybrid cloud or a private cloud environment. Uh, we said instead of using just vSphere, we can integrate it with the vRealize automation and orchestration tools. So you have a self-service portal to deploy hundreds of VMs with a click of a button on top of your vxRail. Okay. Uh, at Dell EMC, we have a solution called the Enterprise Hybrid Cloud, which initially was only supported on a, a vBlock or a vX block. And that allows us to deploy literally dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of VMs with a click of a button in VRail as automation. We can also have it integrate the networking with NSX. We can have it deploy applications on those VMs. Uh, and that's considered our enterprise hybrid cloud solution. Uh, it's really a whole bunch of VMware and Dell EMC products kind of smushed together as this cool solution. Uh, recently, they've actually qualified that hybrid cloud solution on VxRail as well, if you're looking for that same feature on just kind of a, a slightly smaller, more cost-effective platform. Okay. Uh, and we've already said you can use it for any type of workload, but if you do have some mission-critical, high-end applications, we can certainly use it in conjunction with that. And then we can use uh, VMware products like HA, DRS, uh, data protection. Uh, of course, vSAN is built in. Uh, and we can even optionally use products like EMC Recover Point for VMs and Cloud Array for additional backup, uh, DR, uh, archiving type of things. Uh, we'll hint at some of these as we go through the presentation. <clears throat> uh, another use case is uh, for VDI, for virtual desktop infrastructure. In fact, in a couple of moments, we'll talk about some of the different VxRail models that are out there. There is actually a V-series VxRail, which is the VDI optimized one. So it gives you a, a lot of memory, it requires you to use 10 gig network connections for higher performance, and it even gives you GPUs, graphic processing cards, which are gonna make a, a, a VDI environment far more efficient. Okay. Okay. And for anyone out there doing any type of big data analytics, uh, we also have a, a S series, or a storage dense series of the VxRail. Uh, it gives you a lot more capacity. All of these nodes, once again, are connected together. So if you need a massive amount of data storage, you need to do a huge amount of parallel processing. If you're doing a lot of big data analytics, Hadoop type of environments, uh, we can even run that pretty effectively on that, that storage dead series. Okay. So we've gone through a few of the different use cases uh, of VxRail, and we said there's several other reasons why you could use it as well. Okay. Uh, in our next lesson, we'll actually talk a little deeper about the different models, the hardware architecture, uh, the network connectivity, the options you have, uh, as well as the, uh, the different software tools that are actually included with the VxRail. Okay. So really, it, it is a very simple physical architecture. Uh, what you're getting is a bunch of nodes or servers that are connected via network switches. Uh, the first generation, if you can kind of take a look at the bottom there, where it says chassis on the right and node, uh, the first generation was based on Quanta servers. Okay? First generation VxRail was based uh, solely on Quanta servers. So with Quanta, you have a chassis, which is kind of like a rack or a enclosure or a shelf, and you get four relatively small form factor nodes that fit into that chassis. Okay? And if you need more, you buy another chassis, it gives you four nodes, and then four nodes, and so on and so forth. Okay? Uh, if anyone didn't know, in the last year or so, we were uh, bought by Dell, so guess what we now include as part of the VxRail solution? Uh, we also nowadays, of course, can have Dell servers. Uh, what's great now is in a VxRail, you can kind of pick what you want. You can have all Quanta servers, you can have all Dell servers, and we do actually include uh, hybrid. So if you want to actually have a mix of different server technologies, we can have Quanta and Dell out there. Uh, the only major requirement is that the first four nodes you buy are identical to each other. Once you get past the first four, you can kind of do whatever you want. There's, there's certainly more flexibility uh, for, for growth. Okay? So at the bottom, we see an example of a, a Quanta chassis. Uh, and then above it, we have a couple of examples of some Dell chassis. Uh, a Dell chassis is just a shelf that contains one physical Dell server. Uh, currently, we support the Dell uh, 630 and the 730 PowerEdge servers. 
The 630 is a one U server, so a little smaller, a little less resources. Uh, and then the 730 is a two U server, bigger, more CPU, more memory, more capacity. So you have your choice uh, of, different, uh, of different, server, uh, different servers with resources. Okay. So you have to have a bunch of nodes, anywhere from three up to 64. They will automatically be added into a cluster. They will be created as a cluster by the VxRail Manager software. And we said all the software is included with it. We'll get to that in the next few slides. The one major requirement, though, is that these servers must be connected to each other over either a one gig or a 10 gig Ethernet network. Okay? Uh, at the beginning of the presentation, we said that customers have the ability to use their own network switches. Okay? So as long as you can meet some basic requirements, uh, for example, your switches support IP version 4 and IP version 6 multicast and a few other settings. Uh, you can use Dell switches, Brocade, Cisco, Arista, and a few other vendors out there as long as you can meet some basic uh, qualifications. Okay. Now, what's interesting is to save you money, we said you're not only bringing your own network switches, uh, you actually can get by with a single non-redundant switch. This product, this environment can actually run on a single physical switch. Is that a good idea? Our favorite word is redundancy, meaning we always want to prevent single points of failure. So having a single switch uh, may not be the best idea. Yes, it will work, but if that switch blows up, you're in trouble. Uh, so it is certainly recommended to have dual network switches uh, that will give us the redundancy and availability uh, that we need. Okay. Uh, we could go for one gig switches. So if you have an existing environment and you don't have the most stringent performance needs, uh, you can go with one or two one gig uh, network switches. Uh, the catch there is, is we will only let you scale your VxRail up to eight nodes. Okay? So if you don't need any more than eight nodes, you can run on one gig. If you do want better performance, uh, you want to be running on a 10 gig network, and that allows us to scale up to, uh, to 64 nodes uh, as needed. Okay? So that might es essentially is our physical architecture. A bunch of servers connected to some one or 10 gig network switches. So as I said, relatively simple. There is no fiber channel SAN. There are no external storage arrays. Everything is hyper-converged on these servers. Okay. Uh, here's just a quick uh, overview of the different models that are out there. So there is a G series, an E series, a V series, a P series, and an S series for your VX rail. Okay. Uh, G stands for general purpose. Uh, and if you have the general purpose, you're, you're dealing with the original hardware. This is actually Quanta technology. Instead of calling it the Q for Quanta, it's G for general purpose. Uh, and you have a choice of storage, either all flash, or you could do a hybrid combo of mechanical disk drives with your flash. Okay. Uh, all of the other models, E, V, P, and S, are based on the Dell uh, PowerEdge servers. Okay. So E stands for entry level, and that is based on the 630, the 1U server with less resources, so it's going to save you some money. Okay. Uh, v, we said, stands for the VDI optimized. So it gives you choices of capacity, all flash or hybrid. It gives you 10 gig connections only for performance. It gives you more memory resources for performance. And it also gives you GPUs, uh, graphic processing cards, for VDI optimization. Uh, the P series is performance optimized. So once again, you have a choice of all flash and hybrid. It is 10 gig connectivity only for performance, more memory, more C CPU as well. And then the S, we said, stands for the storage dense. That is really optimized for big data solutions where it gives you significantly more capacity uh, and it gives you a hybrid only uh, disk choice. If you're looking for specifics on how much CPU, how much memory, how much capacity, uh, I am not going to throw those numbers at you. I don't want to bore you all to death, but you can very easily go to DellEMC.com and we have a couple page spec sheet that'll talk about the ranges of CPU memory capacity. But these are the major models that uh, we should be familiar with. Okay. All right. Uh, as we mentioned, when it comes to the network, customers provide, install, and configure top of rack network switches themselves. So it allows you to certainly pick your own uh, technology, also save you some money. Uh, and you can configure multiple VLANs for, for traffic segregation. So we can have a separate management network that VxRail Manager uses for discovery, uh, for management. Uh, and we can certainly have different uh, VLANs for segregating vMotion traffic for migration, vSAN traffic for the storage uh, distribution, as well as for the actual uh, VM and application data. So we certainly support multiple VLANs uh, for segregation, performance, and security. Uh, if the customer wants to, we said that as of uh, now, we actually can include some Dell EMC Kinetrix VDX 6740 switches as part of the solution. They are completely optional. 
Uh, I believe those are brocade branded switches under the covers, but I would not be shocked if very soon that included some Dell switches uh, as well. Okay? So the network is, is choose your own. All right. Uh, we mentioned that if you're looking to start small, uh, we can get by with uh, a minimum configuration of three nodes. So perfect for small uh, remote office branch office environments where you don't need huge performance. Um, we can do it for POC, proof of concept environments, or we can start small, and as I said, we can certainly scale out as needed, start off with three, and then as needed, we can increment it one node at a time as we need to go as we grow. Okay. All right. Uh, here's just a, some basic marketing stuff about the, uh, the capacity and the scalability. So we said you can go from anywhere from three up to 64 nodes. Uh, we can scale in a small environment anywhere from you know, a few dozen to a couple hundred virtual machines up to a full capacity environment where we go up to uh, the ability to create 3,200 virtual machines. So even though it is kind of marketed as a small to mid-range mid environment, it, the ability to create over 3,000 virtual machines is, is pretty good. Okay? So that's uh, uh, certainly dependent on the load on those VMs, the type of server, the type of capacity, uh, but those are some numbers that we uh, kind of throw out at you. So I know we've hinted at a lot of these software products as I've, I've spent the last several minutes talking, but here's kind of a nice overview on the slide of the different software architecture, the software products that are included. We know about the hardware, a bunch of servers connected to network switches, but what really makes this thing run? Uh, as you can see, uh, for the most part, most of this is, is VMware software running on these Dell or Quanta servers. Okay? So the, 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 the magic is vSAN or virtual SAN. We said that a vSAN data store will automatically be created uh, as part of the initial setup and deployment. Uh, for those of you who haven't played with vSAN too much, vSAN will take all of the capacity from all of the servers and create one big virtual data store. When we start creating the dozens and hundreds and thousands of virtual machines on this big cluster, uh, all of that data will be in that one virtual data store. And what vSAN is going to do is it's going to guarantee that the data that the VMs and applications generate is evenly distributed across the different disks, across the different nodes. So if any one server were to fail or if any one disk drive were to fail, uh, your data is still fully available and will be rebuilt on the fly onto surviving servers and disks. Uh, if you need additional levels of redundancy, we can increase the FTT or the failure to tolerate. So if you want to avoid you know, a single point of failure, fantastic. But if, what if you want to avoid two or three single points of failure? Well, we can actually have the data use uh, different RAID schemes like RAID 6 under the covers to guarantee that two disk failures or two node failures will not take down your application environment. Okay. So vSAN Enterprise License is built into the cost of a VxRail. You do not pay anything extra for that. You don't need to use any separate management software. It is built directly into ESXi, and you manage it and monitor it from vSphere the way you normally would. Okay. Uh, we said there's an embedded vCenter server that is included with this solution. So you have a vCenter server appliance automatically deployed as part of the deployment. And we can use that vCenter with vSphere to manage your vXRail cluster as its own entity. Or if you don't want to do that, we said, just add it to an existing external vCenter so you have a choice of embedded versus external. Okay? Uh, what's also nice with this product is it includes vRealize Log Insight. Anyone here use Log Insight? Have Log Insight? Cool. Instead of logging into dozens of separate products and looking at your logs and troubleshooting them with different tools, what's great about Log Insight is you can have all of these different products, hardware and software products, send all of their log files to a central location, a central repository, which is the vRealize Log Insight repository. And then using uh, Log Insight's uh, graphical user interface, you can actually look at all of your logs from a central repository. You can query them. You can sort them. You can filter them. So it is a nice central log management utility. And that is also included with the price of your, the VxRail. Okay? And then we said, optionally, you don't have to do it. But if you want to use some of the, la the larger cloud-related products like vRealize Automation, Orchestration, if you want to use vRealize Operations for, for monitoring, reporting, health checks, all of those other vRealize suite products uh, can be added on optionally uh, later on if you wanted to. Okay? Uh, the major thing that Dell EMC provides from a software basis is VxRail Manager. We said VxRail Manager is the tool we use to deploy it to set it up automatically initially, but then we hand it off to you as a customer, and VxRail Manager will give you great physical and logical views of the VxRail kind of holistically. 
So if you wanted to dig into the physical servers, the Dell servers, the Qantas servers, look at the disks, look at the CPU, look at the memory, uh, look at how much capacity is filling up, what kind of load we're putting on the processors and the memory, VxRail Manager gives you that great kind of physical and logical representation. It also gives you a direct connection back to Dell EMC support, so if you have any problems, uh, we can communicate with you there. Um, and a few other features are built in. Okay. Uh, the ESRS, the Dell EMC Secure Remote Support, is also included as part of this. So that is the phone home ability. If something were, God forbid, to fail, it would actually phone home and we'd come out there and fix it. We can also use that ESRS tool to log in remotely to do diagnostics, troubleshooting, and uh, solve problems. Okay. Uh, other options included with VxRail, we can use these for data protection and availability, is uh, RP for VM, Recover Point for VM. Has anyone heard of Recover Point before? Uh, Recover Point initially was used to protect a LUN's data, or volume's data from a storage array to another volume on a different storage array. If you had a disaster, it would automatically replicate that data to another volume someplace else, and we could fail over. Okay. Uh, what's nice is we built a version of Recover Point that does the same thing uh, for virtual machines. So we can replicate a virtual machine from one host or one cluster to another host or cluster someplace else for disaster recovery. So if you were to have a failure, we can seamlessly fail over to the other VM on the other host without any issues. And we can also roll back to any point in time uh, of the application. Okay? Uh, Cloud Array uh, is a relatively new tool at Dell EMC. Uh, what it allows you to do is virtually give your servers additional SAN and or NAS storage that comes from the cloud. We can connect it to other cloud arrays. We can connect it to pu public clouds. So if you need additional storage for your, uh, for your, your Dell and Qantas servers, we can actually get some from this thing called the cloud array. And your server will fully believe it has additional capacity. Uh, we typically use that as a backup and an archiving solution uh, for maybe tier one, tier two, tier three data, non-production related. Okay? Uh, we also can use vSphere replication tools and data protection tools that we'll take a quick look at in the next couple of seconds. Okay. Uh, here's a nice little software stack. So we've already mentioned that on the bottom, uh, we're using primarily VMware products. Every node has ESXi installed as its hypervisor slash operating system. vSAN is built into the kernel, manages the storage as one big happy pool. Uh, vCenter server is used to create the cluster and then connect to it via vSphere. Okay. Uh, operations and management, we said we have VxRail Manager, we have the Log Insight for log management, and then the EMC Secure Remote Support for phone home and dial in if there's any problems. And then the optional products at the top are the vRealize products, we said, for cloud integration. Okay, I think we've already talked enough about vSAN, right? Minimal load on the server, manages our storage centrally. It is all automatically set up during the initial VxRail deployment, so there's little to nothing you have to do. As soon as you start creating your virtual machines when this goes into production, that data will automatically be protected and spread across that shared data store. I believe we're using vSAN, I, I think we're using vSAN 6, it might be at 6.2 right now. I think it's 6.2. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, vSAN, we said, as long as you have um, an all-flash environment, we can take advantage of really cool features like dedupe and compression to save you money and space. Uh, erasure coding or parity uh, is a protection scheme which was, will certainly save you money in space versus normal mirroring. Uh, it has a software checksum for data integrity to make sure that any data created is exactly what it's supposed to be when it hits its destination. Uh, and on a VM by VM basis, we can set some policies for how that data will actually be uh, protected. Okay. Uh, we talked about log insight for log management, so no need to read that slide. Okay. Uh, quickly, the data protection schemes that we have available. Uh, for those of you familiar with uh, the VDP, the vSphere data protection, that can certainly run on top of a VxRail. So we can do image-based backups of your virtual machine and your application data. And it's using, under the covers, uh, EMC Avamar, which not only backs up the data, but also deduplicates that data during the backup process to save you money and space. Okay. We talked about the cloud array, allows you to give additional SAN and NAS storage to the servers if you need more capacity. This is used primarily for backup and archiving. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then we can integrate lots and lots of other BC tools, business continuity tools like VMware snapshots, clones, recover point for VM, uh, active active stretch clusters for disaster recovery, uh, HA, all of the, the cool tools you're familiar with. Okay. Uh, last quick section right here. We've already talked about this, but here's just a couple slides on it. Uh, from a management perspective, we said we're using 
vSphere with vCenter server, okay, to manage the entire VxRail as a single entity, a single cluster that your VMs will de de be deployed across. VxRail Manager, we said is used for install, upgrades, as well as uh, monitoring, alerting, reporting type stuff. Uh, and then the, the add-on tools, once again, we've seen this a few times, the vRealize tools like automation, orchestration, and operations can be added on if you want it separately. Uh, there's a pretty screenshot of VxRail Manager. Uh, one of the cool things we said is you can click on any node and it'll give you a photo realistic interactive view of the node. You can click on it, you can click on the drives, you can dig into the shelves, uh, and you can take a look at any faults or issues. You can look at capacity, health, performance type of stuff. Okay. And we said as far as vSphere goes, it, it's kind of bring your own license. So you can certainly apply a vSphere Enterprise Plus license, which will give you full functionality, full automation features like DRS, or you can use a basic vSphere license. So as long as you know what your license entails, uh, you can apply it to the VxRail, and you'll get the same type of features you get outside of the VxRail environment. Okay. So that, my friends, takes us to the end of our brief lecture on the VxRail. Uh, hopefully you guys feel comfortable with the, uh, the architecture, the features, the terminology, the software that is included. Before we open up for questions, we just want to let you know that uh, there are several people uh, in this booth right here. So if you have any questions about VMware education or Dell EMC education, uh, please feel free to ask anyone of that uh, that's around. Uh, we've included the links here for, uh, for training. Um, so, uh, and also realize that there is a, a deep discount right now on any type of certification. So if anyone's interested in taking classes and taking any certification tests, uh, I know they're offering a, a pretty good deal on that as well. Uh, something that also is, is new that has been uh, introduced very recently by VMware are uh, digital badges. So there is al there's already a vSAN badge out there, but the one that we want to talk about for a couple moments is this new uh, VxRail, Dell EMC VMware co-skilled VxRail 2017 badge right there. Uh, notice I have the fancy pin right here that goes with it. Uh, in order to get this digital badge, which you can uh, certainly add to your Facebook profile, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, uh, you can put it on your resume if you're looking for a new job. You can print it out, put it on your fridge, and impress your family and friends. Um, in order to get this fantastic badge, you need to do a couple of things. You have to either be VCP6 or VCP6.5 certified. So if you already have a VCP, you're already more than halfway there. Uh, the other thing is uh, we have a new uh, e-learning class. It's called VxRail uh, Administration and Management. Uh, it is an e-learning, okay? So it's self-paced. You do it on your own. It takes a good few hours to get through. Uh, at the end of that uh, VxRail e-learning, there is an assessment, okay, a little quiz. As long as you take it and pass it, uh, that in conjunction with your VCP will allow you to get the, uh, the digital badge. Okay? And I believe the first 100 people who actually attain their digital badge, you will get some fancy new uh, paraphernalia. You'll get this really cool Dell EMC uh, bag right here. You will also get the fancy hat. And you'll also get the pin, okay? So I believe that is the first 100 people who get that. Um, otherwise, you just get the, uh, the virtual digital badge. It's pretty cool, huh? Jealous? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, my friends. Before we leave, does anybody have any questions or comments? Anything that we can uh, help you with? Anything I can answer? Good. It's a, very, it's a similar architecture, yeah. So that if you walk down there, you'll see there's an entire hyperconverged section where you'll see Nutanix, you'll see there's a, an Intel offering, the, all the Dell EMC offerings. So it's a very similar thing. They're using different software, though, and different hardware to manage their environments. But it's a similar type of offering, hyperconverged. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, good. Uh, we site recovery manager. Uh, I, this product itself, uh, the question is, are we we're using a bunch of vSphere data protection tools? Is this product natively using SRM site recovery manager to do it? Uh, that's a good question. I, I know that there's no included license for site recovery manager built into VxRail. If it's something you wanted to optionally use on top of it, I, I don't think it would be a problem, but I, I can check on that for you. It's a good question. Okay. Question. So the question is, is there going to be a direct connect where you might have a two-node minimum? That, that's a good question. I have not seen any rumors or heard anything about it. It, just seems like it, lags. 
Yeah, uh, so the question is, yeah, about a feature, are you going to be using the Direct Connect? I have not heard any rumors, so that's something I would stay tuned for. OK, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? I apologize. Um, the vSphere version? That's a good question. Last, I, I teach this class probably once every couple of months. Uh, as of a couple of months ago, it was still at 6.0. Um, I'm pretty sure within the next few months, it'll be qualified for 6.5. So my guess is, as of right now, it's probably still 6.0, uh, unless something just changed this week. OK, so but pretty soon. Is, uh, right now, it's 6.0, update 2. OK, thank you. Thank you. Question? Say it one more time. They don't allow me to talk about prices. Uh, I'm not a sales guy at all, and if I say it, I'd probably get killed. Uh, but it's compared to other hyperconverged and other solutions out there, uh, as I said, it, it can be a relatively um, cost-effective solution. Because you can start with three nodes. Uh, it comes with some package software, and then a lot of the other software is optional. So the fact that you bring your own vSphere license, the fact that you can bring your own switches, uh, it, it can be. Um, if you go to uh, dellemc.com, they'll probably give you some basic prices. But if you have any specific questions, we can get you in touch with a salesperson. OK, cool. Okay, I have one on my bag. I'll sell you for $13. No, I'm kidding. Okay. All right. If you have no more questions, uh, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate your time, and uh, best of luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> That's right.